beginning. As police investigated the murders, the media scavenged for scoops. Much was made of the ski mask reportedly found at the crime scene, which turned out to be a knit cap. And a folding shovel, once touted as the murder weapon. And how about blood in Simpson's golf bag? Or yet to be released DNA test from a glove linking O.J. Simpson and the two victims. All local Simpson scoops yet to be publicly verified by officials. It's great to be first but it's a hell of a lot more important to be right. Ed Guthman, Pulitzer Prize winning newsman and professor at USC, says mistakes can also happen when the media relies on unidentified sources. There's a lot of people working for their own ends and they're going to want to exploit it and then uh, and leak information that might be damaging to the other side. What's the downside of these mistakes? The downside is um, a, a trivializing of the media itself, a lack, a loss of integrity and, and respect among the people. People who are beginning to doubt what they see on TV. I don't have any confidence in the product I'm getting. You need to stop speculating so much. They may be giving people what they want, but they're not doing anybody any good. Still, people are hooked. Everybody's psychology is they want to see as much of this as possible because everybody is transfixed by it. It's the murder case of the century. So viewers will stay tuned for now, despite their doubts. Everything I hear, I take with a grain of salt. But scoops that go sour may one day turn them off and tune them out. Art Harris, CNN, Los Angeles. Now at Pearl Vision, Buy one complete pair of glasses and get a second pair free. Plus, a sunglass tint on either pair is also free. Only at Pearl Vision. Here's something different, sweetie. Sudden changes in your dog's diet can sometimes lead to stomach discomfort. So feed your dog a consistent diet during a dog chow every day. Tonight. That's one small step for man. 25 years after the first steps on the moon, has NASA become lost in space, living up to the Apollo legacy? CNN presents tonight, 9 Pacific. While some are content to set short-term goals, consider this before you draw any lasting conclusions. Now, J.D. Power & Associates reveals that the best overall car line in vehicle dependability after five years of ownership no longer comes from Germany or Japan. The leader is Cadillac, creating a higher standard as time goes by. What does a communications company look like? Bell South thinks that's best answered by our customers. A national retailer saw us as someone who could support their system's technology, while a major airline saw us as someone who could coordinate cellular service nationally. You see, Bell South can provide solutions as different as your challenges. So what does a communications company look like? Just ask our customers. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. A clear, clean, powerful gel that goes on smoothly with no white residue to form an invisible barrier of protection. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. We'll update our top stories for you right after this break. Plus, here's a look at what's still ahead. Fire, dancing, and drums in Haiti. Some are summoning the gods and threatening to conjure up voodoo spells. It's their way of warding off a possible U.S. invasion. It's health care they're brewing on Capitol Hill. The heat is on for Congress to come up with a compromise before the issue gets down to the wire. African Americans are searching for a message that works to save their community from a killer, AIDS. In the spirit of the freedom riders from the civil rights era, college students are sharing their knowledge in hopes of freeing their communities from violence, poverty, and drugs. Then coming up at the top of the hour, CNN Sports Tonight. And now here's Ted Texter to tell us what the weather holds. Ted? Uh, Gene, too much rain, too much water, especially in the south and eastern United States. How long will it last? Details are coming up when World News continues, so stay with us, please. At the 1994 Goodwill Games, some will win by flying. Some will win by reaching. 
Some will win by gliding, and some will win just by watching. The 1994 Goodwill Games Watch and Win competition on TBS. 16 days, 16 trips, 16 chances to win. The ultimate game is right before your eyes. In the July 23rd TV Guide. There is no other name in real estate that is as powerful as Century 21. Why would 9 out of 10 customers recommend Century 21? It's a large, large organization, but it's also as personal as me and you. You know when you walk through the door of a Century 21 office that the agents in that office have been trained. Surveys of homeowners show Century 21 is rated the best at selling homes. Century 21 means success. Quality service. People. Century 21, rated number one. They set the standards for real estate. Was it America's finest hour? Buzz Aldrin recalls Apollo 11 25 years later on Larry King Live Tuesday night, 9 Eastern on CNN. The Subaru Legacy has been the top-selling import wagon for 12 years in a row. A closer look shows why. A roomier interior with cargo capacity that rivals sports utility vehicles. The road handling and exterior styling of a well-mannered sedan. Available all-wheel drive. And best of all, savings up to $1,000 in cash rebates. Test drive a legacy today at Twin City Subaru, Route 2 in Montpelier. My darling Colette, I meant to stop by last night, but I couldn't. The hill's too steep. Don't blow it. Get the new ABT brake only on rollerblade skates. It's the easiest way to stop from the company that got it all started. Rollerblade. This is CNN. Now taking a look at headlines from around the world. They're dancing in the streets in Brazil after some fancy footwork on the field. Soccer field, that is, as Brazil becomes the first country ever to win four World Cup titles. The Brazilians edged Italy 3-2 in a penalty kick shootout. More pieces of the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet are hurtling towards Jupiter. Six fragments of ice and rock have slammed into the planet, producing fireballs. One left a scar half the size of Earth. Sixteen more pieces are expected to hit Jupiter by Friday. Amid what has been described as the exodus of a nation, a secondary tragedy today. Rwandan refugees, terrified by mortar assaults that followed them across the border into Zaire, sparked a stampede. Witnesses say some 50 people were trampled to death, many of them children. The shelling prompted U.N. officials to suspend relief flights to the area. The Clinton administration continues to stress its growing impatience with the defiant military government of Haiti. Incoming White House Chief of Staff Leon Panetta is repeating the White House position that a military invasion cannot be ruled out. Uh, the president's made very clear that uh, we're keeping all military options uh, on the table. Uh, but that uh, what we're doing right now is to continuing, continuing to push on a very consistent policy of implementing sanctions and providing humanitarian help uh, for those that are leaving ha Haiti and providing a safe haven for them. In tonight's Focal Point, how talk of a U.S. invasion and the return of a deposed president resonate in Haitian communities. We have two reports tonight. CNN's Christine Negroni begins our look in New York. The men at George's Barbershop in Manhattan are getting a haircut and an earful. Because while the razor hums, the radio plays the latest news from Haiti. Just sit now. You are not willing to do, negotiate with the general in Haiti anymore. Economy pays no an agony. When ousted Haitian President Jean Bertrand Aristide broadcast into Haiti last week, he was following his country's political tradition of using radio as an instrument of change. Radio is more popular than newspapers because most of the nation cannot read and few Haitians can afford television. The transistor revolution is that revolution uh, that enabled uh, Haitian for the first time uh, to, to, to hear messages that they, they were not allowed to hear. I think the same tradition is continuing here. 
Here in New York, home to nearly a half million Haitians, radios stay tuned to the handful of stations broadcasting in Creole, from barbershops to beach blankets to bakeries. I use it for my pillow sometimes, 24 hours, to know what's going on in Haiti. So great is the demand for news from Haiti that four New York area stations broadcast Haitian programming, and authorities recently shut down two others for operating without a license. Just as transistor radios in Haiti were credited with inspiring a nation to overthrow its dictator, Jean-Claude Baby Doc Duvalier, Haitian stations in New York claim responsibility for recent and massive demonstrations that directed public attention to the strength of sentiments among Haitians living in the U.S. We keep the Haitian people informed of, of the brutalities of the, of the regime, of what's happening, of, of the consequences of not uh, having democracy return to Haiti. Haitian radio's traditional role serving as messenger for people hungry for information continues. And many are hoping now that its history of inspiring listeners to effective action repeats itself. Christine Negroni, CNN, New York. A Garden of Eden setting in the Haitian countryside. What brings all these people here? It's voodoo. Haiti's voodoo practitioners gather to wash away their bad luck and ask for a better future. This joyfully spirited annual ritual at the V. Bonheur waterfall clashes with darker images of voodoo held outside of Haiti. Some in Haiti are trying to exploit the other more sinister side to the folk religion. They threaten to unleash voodoo forces against any U.S. military intervention with witch doctors concocting powders from the bones of AIDS victims to infect those they want to harm. If the Marines come into Haiti to invade Haiti, that I'm sure of it, they will do it. They will send all that powder to the Marines to have aid. Threats of using indigenous methods come from political leaders as well. We're talking about powders. We're talking about um, poison darts. We're talking about uh, traps. We're talking about water. Poison water. Those threats are far from the aura of family bonding and the spiritually healing sides of voodoo that attracted the faithful to the waterfall. Here, believers are swept up in the mystical powers of the waters, where they are convinced the gods reside. This ritual in the cleansing torrents of the waterfall is in sharp contrast to the more frequent voodoo services, often conducted in the darkness of the night. The ceremony begins with a mesmerizing drumbeat summoning the guards. As the night progresses, an intricate design traced with cornmeal further invites the spirits, and they make their presence felt by entering the bodies of participants. As the pitch of the ceremony builds, the presence of the spirits overtakes the entire gathering, building to a bloody climax where the guards are fed their favorite foods, in this case, live chickens. Under the spell of the spirits, participants are inured to pain, lapping up flames with no visible burns. For years practiced in secret, voodoo is now a local religion in Haiti, practiced by the majority of the population. Elders of this uniquely Haitian faith say they deplore the black magic side of voodoo, a side they don't deny exists. They maintain that voodoo is primarily a force for good. Mm. People who use voodoo to do evil things are against God, and God is against them. Many voodoo faithful reject efforts to turn their religion against outsiders. They argue that the gods are angry at the Haitian military leadership for their ouster of the man elected by the people, President John Bertrand Aristide. An ouster they believe is responsible for the current political chaos in Haiti and the drought that is now destroying crops. The return of Aristide and of the rains are some of the deeply felt desires the faithful beg from their gods. In a ritual such as this, the common people of Haiti do their part to influence decisions that profoundly affect their lives. Decisions that are often made far from their shores in places with names like Washington, D.C. Peter Arnett, CNN, V. Bonheur, Haiti. Focal Point is brought to you by Sprint, the communications company that moves as quickly as your business. With Sprint, you can be there now. Remember when Sprint's fiber optic network just meant a great phone call? That was a pin? Today you'll find that same Sprint clarity and high-speed data transmission. 
worldwide video conferencing, voice activated calling. That was a pen? And wireless communications. Only one company lets you be there with all this technology right now. So in case you were wondering, Are you a pin, Mr. Hall? Yes, that was a pin. But my cat's healthy. Should I be concerned? Is a cat's urinary tract health important? Don't overlook cat's urinary tract health. Serve your cat Purina Cat Chow Special Care brand cat food. It's specially formulated to help maintain a cat's urinary tract health. I love my cat, and I give him the best I can. Cat Chow Special Care. Special care for your special cat. After driving the Land Rover Discovery through Tanzania, Burundi, and Sabah, Malaysia, there was only one place left to take it. Introducing Discovery, the family vehicle from Land Rover. for falling prices at Walmart, all over the store. Always low prices, always Walmart. Tuesday, illegal Chinese aliens, thousands smuggled into America, costing the U.S. 20 billion a year. And little is done to stop it. A business of human cargo beginning Tuesday on CNN's Moneyline, 7 p.m. Eastern. It began with a dream. Of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Relive an unforgettable moment with special guest, former astronaut Buzz Aldrin. A walk through history. Wednesday, 8.30 Eastern on CNN. If President Clinton is to achieve the goal of comprehensive health care reform before the November elections, then Congress must make significant progress soon. CNN's Jill Doherty reports that as the traditional summer recess approaches, the partisan bickering intensifies. Two Democratic senators dropped by the White House Sunday for one-on-one -on -one sessions with the president on health care, searching for alternative ways of paying for it. One possibility, a proposal to have employers and employees split the cost of coverage 50-50. He talked about uh, uh, the going to the 50-50. Uh, he didn't say that's where they were going, but to, to get a feel of how that would work with us. And I told him that I thought I would probably support that. The heat is on Democratic leaders in the House and in the Senate to come up with the winning set of compromises that can pull a bill together. With time evaporating, the partisan fighting is heating up. The Republicans, uh, those opposed to this plan, have been uh, you know, basically kicking the hell out of the uh, Clinton plan for the last year. Uh, we're fighting back. As proof, the president's new chief of staff took a swipe at Senator Bob Dole, claiming Dole is operating at his worst, dominated by political ambitions. Dole brushed that off. He was too busy defending his own health care plan from criticism by the National Governors Association. They say his plan would saddle them with paying millions of dollars more for Medicaid. Dole warned Democrats the health care fight will go down to the wire. Uh, my view is that if, if, if Senator Mitchell and the president and the leaders in the House are serious about this, we ought to know right now. We ought to say there will not be an August recess. But Democratic Senate Majority Leader George Mitchell also says they may have to stay in Washington for the first week of recess, which is supposed to begin August 12th. So the schedule looks like this. Debate in each house could begin late this month or early August. It's not clear yet who goes first, the House or the Senate. Each house reports out a bill. When they return from recess mid-September, those bills go to a conference committee to iron out the differences. Then back to each floor for a separate vote by late September or October, hopefully in time for the end of session October 7th. Then it goes to President Clinton's desk, but that seems a million miles away right now. Instead, this week, Mr. Clinton goes head to head with Bob Dole in Boston, as both of them address the National Governors Association on health care. Jill Doherty, CNN, the White House. 
Here are some other stories making headlines. The chairman of the Walt Disney Company is recuperating rather, from a quadruple coronary bypass. Michael Eisner underwent surgery at a Los Angeles hospital Saturday after falling ill Friday. Doctors are pleased with his progress so far. Eisner helped boost Disney's annual revenues from one and a half to more than eight billion dollars during the last decade. Los Angeles was, has not fully recovered from its devastating earthquake of exactly one half year ago and on the six month anniversary today, a jolting reminder, an aftershock. The aftershock caused no structural damage or injuries. However, experts say it was about strong enough to knock a picture off a wall. Gray skies didn't discourage people in San Francisco from helping a good cause. Thousands put on their walking shoes for the 8th annual AIDS walk. The six mile route took them through the Golden Gate Park. The event raises money for support and educational groups. Getting the word out about AIDS prevention means getting past cultural barriers and changing habits. Statistics show AIDS to be the leading killer among some African Americans, but a new program aims to change that. Susan King has tonight's News from Medicine report in Washington. A hot summer Friday night, men and women from Washington's inner city moved to a weekend frame of mind. And in front of Jerry's, the talk is about AIDS. But you know about AIDS, right? And you know how you can get it and how you can't get it, right? So we're trying to stop the spread among African America. As statistics show AIDS to be the leading killer of black men and women in the country aged 25 to 44, activists try to target their message to those at risk who have not listened. At the beginning, it was kind of hard because People felt like this virus didn't belong to them, it belonged to certain other groups. Candy believes this targeted message works. I think that's um, a good idea to help people around here because uh, a lot of people are you know, having unsafe sex and that's how they catch an AIDS. AIDS now ranks ninth on the National Center for Health Statistics list of top ten causes of death. AIDS wasn't even detected until 1981. But its startling growth in the black community proves preventive messages have not overcome skepticism. That's because of the Tuskegee um, Institute experiment, syphilis injected um, into black men. And I, I think people get tired of hearing about that, but we can't say we're tired of hearing about it. It's a real issue in our community, and it's a barrier. The leading voices in the AIDS war have been gay men. Activists are calling for African-American leadership and targeted messages. It's an outrage that this has quietly crept up within the black community and has the potential to be a, um, a, a devastating Im impact on that community. And no one is really addressing that issue. When gay activists found that AIDS was killing many in their ranks, they mobilized. And now AIDS activists argue the African-American community must recognize the disease is killing many of its young men and women. And without a message that works, the death rate will only climb. Susan King for CNN, Washington. Even as the water levels continue to recede in flood-stricken Georgia, it continues to rain. For the first time since July 1916, it has rained in Georgia for 14 straight days. More people returned home from shelters this weekend to find their belongings soaked and covered in mud. Senator Paul Coverdell said that as difficult as the flood has been, the next two months will be a severe test clearing debris, re-establishing roads, and getting lives back together. For the latest weather picture, here's Ted Texter in Atlanta. Ted. Gene, as we speak, it is raining in Georgia. Throughout a good bit of Dixie, we have rain showers uh, a little bit heavier farther to the west into Oklahoma and through Arkansas, heavier showers. It has been storming on the east coast of the United States throughout the late afternoon and evening hours, too. And we're still in the watch for some heavy to severe weather. The front range of the Rockies into the high plains. Scattered storms across the south and west where rain is needed. Hopefully we will get more there. Into the next day, here's what we expect to happen. The forecast weather map looks like this. Widespread cloudiness and rain showers all the way from the western provinces of Canada down the front range of the Rockies uh, into the high plains across the Great Lakes south to Dixie and then on east to the mid-Atlantic region north and eastern United States more rain is scheduled there too across the western provinces of Canada rain showers all the way to British Columbia and in the southwest we have a good prospect for more rains and into Tuesday more of the same these maps uh, will expand the amount of rain on them will expand as we get into the late afternoon and evening hours on the plains Great Lakes region upper uh, Midwest East Coast throughout most of uh, the eastern seaboard region there will be rain over the next day or two our UV index into the next day it includes moderate levels of ultraviolet radiation across most of the northern tier of the United States.
United States. High levels across the south, central, southeast, into the southwest, on up into uh, big sky country. In those areas, if you are exposed to a lot of sunlight, could burn within 15 minutes. Detailed forecast for your Monday now. It looks like we're going to see some rain across Europe, but not an awful lot. Low pressure just south of the Benlux region brings rain to southern parts of Germany and Poland, on east into Ukraine, northward across uh, western sections of Russia, across Scandinavia, a little bit of rain across the British Isles, Ireland too, rain showers expected there. Walt, a typhoon, same thing as a hurricane, just a different part of the world, continues to move somewhat uh, aimlessly east-northeast. We'll keep you posted. Gene, let's look at the weather. Ted, thanks. They are rooted in the civil rights movement of the 60s, and their aim is to guide the inner city youth of today toward a better tomorrow. CNN's Mark Carter has more on what's going on in the Freedom Schools. In the summer of 1964, they headed south to help blacks make strides toward equality. The Freedom Riders gave their time to change the world. Some even gave their lives. The legacy lives on today in 18 freedom schools around the country. For the most part, we're planting the seed. You know, I think of this as a mini farm. We're planting the seeds and hopefully things can grow from this farm. Winston Miller is one of 600 college students giving the summer of 94 to inner city youth. Educated African Americans reaching back here to free young blacks for a few hours a day from the grip of violence, poverty and drug abuse in the streets. All too often, a lot of our kids come from low-income uh, areas where the role model might be um, um, from the streets, a drug dealer, or what have you. But, you know, there are positive role models for the African people, such as students, such as teachers, such as lawyers. How many braids does she have? Look at her braids. And teachers aim to free young black minds from subtle biases and barriers. And, sh and it shows something about your hair, that it's curly and wavy. And that's a good thing to know, that we have curly hair and that straight hair isn't always we don't have to have straight blonde hair to be beautiful, that our hair is beautiful as well. And black history, these students learn, has its own beauty. Learn about, about Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and all the other black um, people. If you're constantly told, you know, you, you've done nothing, your people have done nothing, you don't begin to, like, think that you could do anything in your future. Young African-American teachers, younger pupils, looking to the future, but knowing where they came from. If it wasn't for what happened in uh, Mississippi and Freedom Summer, what is called Freedom Summer in 1964, I don't think I'd be sitting here talking to you today about um, Freedom Summer 94. When students began marching for freedom three decades ago, how could they have known how many others would continue their strides? Mark Carter, CNN, San Francisco. This quality time was made possible by GMAC. Wow! With financing and leasing that can be arranged for your new GM vehicle fast, right at the dealership. Because GMAC believes you should be out enjoying your new car instead of waiting for it to be financed. GMAC, the expressway home. It's a major breakthrough in auto protectant technology. Formula 2001 Super Protectant. It provides a more brilliant, longer-lasting shine than Armor All on vinyl and leather. And look, in the Arizona desert, Formula 2001 brought back the shine to UV faded vinyl, rubber, even leather. Get the new standard in automotive protectant technology. Formula 2001 with 50% more active shining ingredients than Armor All. Get Formula 2001 products today. Every year, American business wastes millions of dollars on international calls by using the wrong long-distance company. Now you don't have to waste that money. Introducing MCI's Proof Positive Worldwide. Save up to 50% off typical international calls around the world. Call by September 30th and get one month of free long distance. Call MCI now and put your money back in your business.
I really didn't want my husband to color his gray hair. But then I discovered this, the hair coloring called Just For Men. And now he looks better than ever. Apply Just For Men and in five minutes, rinse. No wonder eight out of ten wives prefer the natural Just For Men look to gray hair. It's like you took off ten years. With Just For Men hair color. And now, new Just For Men color gel for the hard-to-color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out, just five minutes. I'll never stop until I get your home sold. Why should you call 1-800-4-HOUSES? I would go through hell and high water for a customer. Go home and tell Mom and Dad we're going to get you a nice house. Century 21, rated number one. Hey, a reminder from MetLife. It's a good idea to have your eyes examined every two years. For more facts, call for your free MetLife Vision Care booklet. The three most important days in American history become two of the most dramatic days in television history. Gettysburg, special encore performance. Tomorrow at 10, only on TNT. Teaching children to read is considered an essential part of education, but teaching them to love to read is another matter. Jed Duval found one youngster for whom love of the printed word has found a very fertile ground. Christian Augustus Washington Gus to some of his friends, doing what he does a lot of. You've been reading a lot, haven't you? You've yes. read lots of things. Yeah. Fiction? Fiction. Nonfiction? Nonfiction. Geography? Science. There is nothing Christian Washington doesn't read. Just ask the librarian. I understand he's read over a thousand books. I've seen him read at three, but not like that. Ms. Hardy is the manager of the Robert L. Christian Library, named for Christian's maternal grandfather. His wife, Alice Stewart Christian, is credited with spotting Christian's gift. This granddaddy's library? Yeah. Library named for granddaddy. She started with him very early. Uh, he was actually able to read at the age of one uh, pretty proficiently, and by the uh, time he was two years old, he could pick up any book or actually read the paper if he wanted to. Christian was already reading and reading a lot when his father bought a video camera. Christmas of 88, I invested in a camcorder, and I haven't put it down since. Cameraman father taped Christian, just short of his fourth birthday, reading to a class. He received his Bachelor of Science degree. What do you like about reading? You can go anywhere if you have different books about different places. You can go to those places, or if you have somebody, biography about something you like, like basketball for me, you could pretend you were that person. Reading about gardening sent Read. Christian in search of some seeds, and the results are to be harvested soon. And here's a ripe tomato. Two of them. Reading about French got him, well, listen. He moved. Yes, he is speaking French to the French ambassador, among others, accepting a prize in a French writing and speaking contest. This summer, Christian Washington, super reader, nine-year-old master acquirer of knowledge, is going to camp, to Japanese language camp. Jed Duval for CNN, Washington. And that's it for World News. I'm Jean Meserve in Washington. Good night, Joe. Good night, Jean. Have a great week. I'm Joe Oliver at CNN Center in Atlanta. Thank you for joining us. Larry Smith joins us now with a look at what's ahead on CNN Sports Tonight. Larry? Well, Joe, we've got a show full of exciting finishes, whether it was the final moments of the World Cup or the last of the British Open. And baseball's divisional races get hotter. Sports Tonight with Tom Kirkland and myself is just two minutes away.
This summer, your voice will be heard. Talk Back Live, an interactive town meeting, begins August 22nd on CNN. Whether you're looking for the adventure of a lifetime or some well-deserved relaxation, you won't find anything better than an RV from Fox Marine and RV. The world-class designs of Thor's Chateau and Citation, combined with first-class service at Fox Marine and RV, means nothing but relaxation and enjoyment for you. Stop by Fox Marine and RV and check out the affordably priced Chateau and Travel Trailers. The best prices on the best product in the heart of Mallets Bay at Fox Marine and RV, Prim Road, Colchester, Vermont. Hi, I'm Marty Keen. I'm a golf professional, but more importantly, I'm a diabetic. I'm proud to be associated with the Heritage Ford Toyota Golf Classic to benefit the Diabetes Association. As you can see, insulin injections have kept me alive. Research is very close to finding the permanent cure for this chronic disease. There are great prizes, but enter a team or contribute because you care. Call now. You can make a difference. to look forward to Friday nights and seeing all of my friends together. The fun we used to have, looking right, you know. I danced and just having a good time. It was a knock at the side door. Music was loud. The boy had opened it. We was laughing and teasing one another. Gunshot. Three shots. Three shots fired. He was killed that somebody that you knew of was um, now gone. It really hurt. Why did this have to happen? Unfortunately, Alicia's story is all too common. Too many children have had their childhood taken from them. Fear of violence is robbing our nation's children of their future. We must take away that fear and give them hope. As a parent, I want this violence to stop. And as your president, I'm committed to ending it. We must give Alicia and all our children back their childhood. Working together, we can. Do something now. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. This is CNN. This is a presentation of CNN Sports. CNN Sports invites you to take a seat right where you are. With the Scottish coast as his guiding light, Nick Price bid on the British. Could Jesper the Swede protect his lead? Did he even know he had it? The Rose Bowl brought the World Cup to a close. What an ending. The Diamond Life sounds like giant fun. Barry and Daryl, stroking and joking. Nothing funny about facing Greg Maddox. Can you say Cy Young three times fast? And hey, that's Neon Dion busted at the scene of the crime. Uh-oh, another show that's not for the squeamish. Let's see, Cy Young, Cy Young, yeah, okay, all right. Oh, that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. All Welcome right. to the show. I'm Larry Smith. And I'm Tom Kirkland. Finally, after a month of uh, just incredible tension and great excitement, the World Cup has come and gone, but what yeah. a great final. Uh, it sure was, yeah. So we'll talk about that more, about that a little bit later. That's right. Yeah, but it only seems fitting that the first ever World Cup in America would end with a first ever championship shootout. Brazil not only carried the weight of 160 million Brazilians on their shoulders as they ventured into the Rose Bowl today, but the history of the Western Hemisphere as well. When the Cup is played in the West, it's won by the West. No exceptions, not even if the other side is Italian. This is what they're playing for, the coveted World Cup. Early on, this is Brazil trying to score on goal, and Gianluca Paluca misplaying it, but thank goodness for the post, as it is still no score. Later, Brazil will be wide open. Mario Silva, the cross to Bebeto, who can't put it in, the open net. Romario can't get it past Pagliuca. And we go into the penalty kick situation where Claudio Taffarel makes the stop with the score tied at two all and the penalty kicks. And that would bring up Dunga for Brazil. He gets this one to go on the fifth penalty kick. Pele is happy and Brazil hasn't won a World Cup since he was playing back in 1970. And Roberto Baggio had to nail this one. It was far too high. Baggio, an outstanding effort, but he loses, and it's Carnival in Sao Paulo as Brazil wins. You know, not long ago, Brazilian fans were calling for Taffarel's ouster as goalie of the team. He could win any national election now, though, winning what may be the first and only shootout in World Cup final history as FIFA is expected to change that tiebreak rule to a sudden-death format. Doesn't matter now, though. It's Brazil who reigns king of the soccer world.
It took a month to whittle down the World Cup from 24 to 2, but when 120 minutes of scoreless but not fruitless soccer hadn't decided much of anything, seven minutes of penalty kick roulette would ultimately determine the 1994 World Cup champ. While purists jumped off tall buildings, our own Brent Weber did a more thorough investigation of the endgame scene. No World Cup final has ever asked so much of so many. After 120 minutes of scoreless soccer, even the fans were exhausted. And so, for the only time in World Cup history, it came down to this for Brazil and Italy, a penalty shootout. It is not the most adequate way of uh, finding a champion, but, you know, after playing 90 minutes and another 30 minutes, it would be grossly unfair to do anything else. It would certainly be unfair to think of playing another game. Un campione del mondo ci doveva essere, oppure dovevamo finire alla pari. There has to be a world champion or else we could have tied. So we have to accept the rules. Penalty is a lottery, right? Yes, penalty is like the lottery. Especially after everyone is tired and the delays. For Italy, it wasn't so much those who made the penalty shots, but the two who missed. Captain Franco Barisi, three weeks removed from knee surgery, fired the first penalty high. And with the cup on the line, reigning World Player of the Year, Roberto Baggio, who played the entire match despite a hamstring injury, misfired to give the title to Brazil. O penalty é muita sorte. É, o goleiro... A lot of luck involved in the penalty kick. O goleiro procura... And the goalkeeper normally tries to pass all the responsibility onto the kicker. I think that when you reach the final match, it's always horrible to lose, whether it's on the field or with the penalty kicks. Unfortunately, that is the nature of sport. Those who don't agree with the penalty shootout as a means of deciding a champion will be glad to hear this will be the first and last time that will happen. Because starting with the next World Cup in France in 1998, World Cup tie matches will be decided in sudden death overtime. From Pasadena, California, I'm Brent Weber, CNN Sports. You know, I think for all of us who watched the uh, World Cup with, uh, with, with great attentiveness over the last uh, month, it's been a great, wonderful experience uh, mm -hmm. to really see these athletes uh, working well. And I personally am real glad that the penalty kick situation has gone because it really reduces a, a great spectacle down to just a, you know, like a, a home run derby roulette kind of situation. Right, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's just kind of a guess back and forth of the goalies. So yeah. it's, this is good news. Yeah. Well, with the World Cup, uh, wasn't the only event on the global <laughs> stage. There was a certain little golf thing going on in Scotland. I think they call it the British Open, yeah. I believe. Yeah. It was a classroom on Sunday, though. When Sports Tonight continues, we'll tell you which lesson the veteran taught the kid today. And has anyone seen Albert Bell's bat? Not the other one, this one. And which tribal member did the breaking and entering? Details later. And the hottest team in baseball resides in the Bay, and no, it is not the A's. Could it be a straw that breaks the Dodgers' backs? The story of San Fran streak and more after this. This World Cup soccer update brought to you by EDS. EDS, the technology services behind the 1994 World Cup. Mr. Darcy, I understand you're a big soccer fan and are excited about this year's World Cup games. Terrific. Couldn't be happy. I love the guy. I was wondering whether your enthusiasm for the World Cup extends to EDS, who's responsible for coordinating all the information technology for the 1994 World Cup. Are they? Brilliant. Wouldn't have it any other way. Fair income. Well, that's nice of you to say. And since you're interested, you might like to know that EDS is actually responsible for integrating all the application systems and computer hardware for the World Cup, and it's the largest client-server application ever created for a sporting event. Very impressive. Top-notch. Terrific company. Love it. Uh, a few extra tickets to the finals, do you? No, sorry. Oh, I... No worries, mate. Semi-finals will be fine. Oh, sorry. I Quarter really... finals, then. What do you say, mate? T-shirt? Keychain? Coffee mug? Commemorative pen? Didn't take long for Mike Keenan to move on just two days after he quit as head coach of the Stanley Cup champion New York Rangers, claiming they breached his contract. Keenan is now the new general manager and head coach of the St. Louis Blues. We're getting reports uh, early in the evening that uh, this has happened. Matter of fact, the Blues reportedly confirming the deal while still meeting with Keenan at a restaurant in suburban St. Louis. This will be Keenan's fourth head coaching job in his nine-year career. Larry? 
Well, meanwhile, American golfers have never been shut out of all four majors since the Masters began back in 1934. 60 years later, the heat will be on when the PGA Championship rolls around next month in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Americans had control of the British Open leaderboard through three rounds, but today it was a familiar face and a baby face who battled to the end for their first British title. Where was Tom Watson, you're asking? Well, the five-time champ was in trouble, struggling with the short putts all weekend, missed on eight, and again on nine, a couple of double bogeys, he ballooned to a 74. Jesper Partovic, the young Swede, was one shot back to start the day, but Bernie's on 11, 12, and 13. We give him a two-shot lead. Nick Price hanging around, on trouble at 14, but the great pitch and run to save par. But Partovic wouldn't give in. Jesper. Birdie here on 16 and again on 17 to get to 12 under. But he made a huge mistake. He said he didn't look at the leaderboard all day long. Thought he needed a birdie to get the win on 18. He went for it, left it short in the rough. And that meant his par putt on 18 would slide by. He would bogey and lead by one. But on par 5, 17, Price, a long 50 some odd foot putt for the Eagle. And the golfer from Zimbabwe is at 12 under. All he needs is a tap in for par in 18 for the championship, and he has it. A sweet win for 1993's PGA Player of the Year. He finished second at the British in 82 and 88. For Parnovic, the young Swede earns 142 grand for his troubles, puts himself on the pro golf map, and learns a painful lesson. Watch the leaderboard. As for the 37-year-old Price, it's his second major title. His 11 under par score on the final 54 holes breaks Tom Watts' mark of 10 under, set in 1977. And again, never before have non-Americans won the first three majors in a given year until now. Time for Major League Baseball. And too bad for the Montreal Expos that the schedule called for a giant invasion just after the All-Star break. And since San Francisco arrived with a rejuvenated Daryl Strawberry to Montreal, the Expos have fallen hard into second place in the East. And don't look now, but the Giants are knocking on the Dodgers' door. Daryl and Barry having a lot of fun. Top of the first, Matt Williams also part of the big party. He rips Jeff Vicero for a two-run rocket, number 34, 2-0 Giants. Bottom of the fifth, 5 nothing Giants, William Van Landingham. Try to say that a few times fast. He rings up Mike Lansing. He retired 18 Expos in a row at one point. Bottom of the eighth, one out. Van Landingham still with the no-hitter. But then Lenny Webster doubles down the right field line right there. It's okay, buddy. He had a great outing. Don't worry about the no-hitter. Top of the ninth, 5-3 Giants. Daryl Strawberry with the single. Here comes Steve Scarsoni. Daryl has six RBI since coming aboard. And uh, wow, uh, Van Landingham is the longest name. William Van Landingham is the longest name in baseball history. But the rookie made short work of the Expos in just his 10th career start, pitching the Giants to their eighth straight win and pulling them to within four and a half of the West leading Dodgers. And it's easy to see where the men of Dustin are getting the lift everywhere. Starters are working deep into games, at least six innings in all eight games. And then Barry, Matt, and Darrell are ripping it, combining for 12 homers, 26 RBI in the last eight games. Look out, Philly, because here come the Giants as the Dodgers limp out of the vet. 2 nothing fills top of the third. Mariano Duncan takes Pedro Astacio a long, long way. Two-run rocket there. 4 nothing favor of the Phillies. Top of the seventh, Fernando. And Corey Snyder, Fernando looks high, and then Corey, get out of there. Don't even argue. Shaky situation for the Phillies. Led it 9 nothing. All of a sudden, it's 9-7 as the Dodgers hit for 7 in the top of the ninth. But there it is. Somehow, the Phillies finally put a stop to that and come away with the win. It was August of 1990 when the Phillies hit for 8 in the ninth to shock the Dodgers. L.A. almost turned it around in this one. Fernando wins his first as a Philly, 150th, uh, 150th of his career. And look out, L.A., not only are the Giants steaming, but the rocks are rolling as well. Dante Bichette had a granny, drove home a team record six, as Colorado now just two out in the West. And in New York, the Padres took a big bite out of the Big Apple. Eddie Williams, a couple of home runs, two of the pods, 19 hits. And before the game, heading coach Merv Rettenman also doubled in an old-timers game. Good for him. Yeah, Terry Pendleton is the heart and soul of the Braves, but he may not have a regular job when he comes back off the DL. Jose Olivas made the most of his brief Major League stint and was a one-man wrecking crew versus Florida this weekend. At Fulton County Stadium, nice grab here by a fan in the upper deck. Good concentration, but uh, Jeff Conine adds a little dive just for difficulty's sake. And, well, i got to give him a 10 on that one. Bottom of the fourth, no score when Oliva yanks one down the line. Justice Emmer Griff will come home, and just like that, the Braves 
are up 2 nothing. That was a double for Oliva. That's all that Maddox would need. Runners on first and second. Braves up 2-1 to one in the eighth. And the Mad Dog facing Dave Magadan and handing him some pine time for the second out. And then Gary Sheffield, a little high heat to just go sit down, get your glove, and get out in the field. Since being called up to play uh, third back on June 30th, Oliva's hitting 444, including 7 of 11 in the three wins this weekend. Maddox now an NL best seven complete games. At Riverfront, it was never over until it's over. Reggie Sanders, the game-winning hit in the 10th, as Cincinnati has won 28 coming from behind. They're 9-2 and two in extra inning games at home. Uh, with their 32 and 14 tops in the lead. We go to three, three Rivers now. Houston trying to keep pace. No score, top of the third. Doug Drabeck, and that's smart. Hit by Paul Wagner's pitch as he turned to bunt on the right to forearm. He got hit. Drabeck left the game. No x-rays were taken, but uh, he was replaced by Shane Reynolds, who did a nice job. Bad move for Paul Wagner because he never uh, got another man out after that. Steve Finley, his first major league grand slam. Second time he's taken Wagner deep this season, part of an eight-run inning by the Astros. Reynolds picked up where Drabeck left off, tossing seven shutout innings to complete the victory. Drabeck will be re-examined tomorrow as the team returns home from an 11-game road trip. Still ahead, the American League story. Why is Tony La Russa beside himself in Oakland? I will tell you why. And a visit to the fast track, where Gant found the ride a bit hairy today in Pocono. Ah, I know. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Back in a moment. If you want your car done right, bring it to Jiffy Lube and ask for Pennzoil. This year, millions of people will rely on the quality of Pennzoil and the confidence of the Jiffy Lube Pledge of Customer Satisfaction. Everybody says they'll do the job right, but at Jiffy Lube, we guarantee it. We got experience at Jiffy Lube. If it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it isn't. There are places you can go where birds aren't the only ones that fly. And fish aren't the only ones underwater. Where you can take a ride in the wild, or just a wild ride. But if you go to any of the bush gardens or sea world parks, bring your sense of adventure and your visa card. Because every one of these parks will take your breath away. But none will take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Mr. Ed taught us that a horse is a horse, of course, of course. But when is the bat the right bat? A hellacious four-game weekend series for the Central Division lead between the Indians and White Sox has become a sub-headline to the confiscated bat caper. Umpires took away Albert Bell's bat on Friday night to test it for Cork. Now Cleveland's GM John Hart admits he knows it was some member of the tribe's organization that broke into the umpire room at Comiskey Park during Friday's game and switched the bat in question. Apparently the real Bell bat is now in the hands of the proper authorities to be sent to the league office for x-raying. GM Hart promises the guilty Indians will be punished. Oh, by the way, the White Sox went for the split Sunday and the big hurt laid into Jack Morris. There it goes. That's right. Ouch indeed. Bottom of the third. It was two to one. It's now three to one. White Sox. Top of the fourth. Pop fly. And look at Manny Ramirez. Makes the nice catch. Throws home. However, trying to get Warren Newsom, but he manages to elude the tag and he's in there. Four to one Sox. Bottom of the seventh. Little Joey Cora. They tell me the ball isn't juiced. His second home run, 5-1. to one. White Sox, Jack knows there's something wrong with that ball because he's laughing. And the Indians are either frustrated or retaliating about the Albert Bell incident because they take a look at Dennis Cook's glove looking for sandpaper or something. Oh, well. Leave it to the frisky old Jack Morris to see the cynical side of this great rivalry atop the Central. He said, quote, it just means we're closer to the strike, unquote. After a split weekend, the Tribe still two percentage points up on the Sox. Casey's David Cohn went looking for his 13th win against the Tigers. And guess what, Juan Samuel, you can get out. Top of the fifth, 4-1 to one KC. Brian McRae having some problems. I can't find it. I have no idea. Normally, he doesn't make plays like that. He's not happy, but he makes up for it. Top of the sixth, still 4-1 to one KC. Tigers with a couple of guys on, two outs. Alan Trammell with a bid to get the Tigers right back in it. But look at Brian. It can't make a better grab than that. What a play, potential play of the day, but it isn't. Greg Gagne had a two-run double, and Wally Joyner is now 11 for 17 since coming off the disabled list. Bob Scanlon won his second straight start after not winning since September, and battery mate uh, Rick Rona hit his first rocket in almost five years to pace the Brewers.
In Seattle, they're making fun of Buck Showalter. The M's fans were. Got his hat turned on backwards there. Ken Griffey Jr. style. First inning, Wade Boggs at third. Tim Leyritz, or Jim Leyritz, that is. Delivers this blast in left center for the uh, two-run homer off John Cummings. Lupinella watching. He knows it's going to be a long day. Yanks up 3-0. Seventh inning now. You know, Leyritz said that it's a good day anytime you have to face Randy Johnson. And Danny Tartable agrees. This is a grand slam of Jeff Nelson, who had just entered the game. Yankees win 14-4 as they earn the sweep. You know, the M's have given up 52 earned runs over the last five games, upping their season ERA to 5.19. That mark is worse than their expansion season back in 1977. Down the coast, the O's were at Big A, taking on the Angels. Two men on, first inning, Rafael Palmero, And that is gone. Russ Springer giving up the goal for ball, and just like that, the O's up 3-0. Top of the third, Dwight Smith, the former Angel. Plays monkey see, monkey do. This one good for two runs off Springer. Baltimore up 5-1. A little defensive problems for Tim Salmon in the seventh inning. Battling the sun and losing the fight. Jack Foy gets a double out of it and on second base, and he gives the assist to Saul. Chris Sable committed an error that allowed a couple of unearned runs to score, but Oriole pitching leaves the majors with only 15 unearned runs given up all season long as Baltimore stays one and a half games out of first. The A's trying to salvage a split in their four-game series with the Red Sox. Bob Welch goes to Damon Berryhill, and Berryhill likes it. He goes gap in left center. Tom Bernanski's in. Here comes Wes Chamberlain. He's in as well. We're tied at two. Top of the ninth, it's three all. Bases loaded. One out for Bernanski, who hits a fly ball to Ricky Henderson, who... Oh, Tony says, come on, grab it. Come on, don't catch it, he's saying. What are you catching it for? Otis Nixon tags up and scores, and Tony La Russa cannot believe it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the A's had won 21 of 28, uh, but they're still hanging around in that lowly West. On to the ballpark. The Rangers hosting the Jays again. Dave Stewart retired the first 13 Rangers before Juan Gonzalez broke up the no-hit bid with a home run. Uh, Kenny Rogers loses for just a second time in his last 10 starts. All right, next up, lace up your sneaks. We're on our horse to catch up with the U.S. Davis Cup team. Almost run out of Rotterdam. What's all the tension about? I thought the Dutch were supposed to go quietly. Details shortly. Every year, American business wastes millions of dollars on international calls by using the wrong long-distance company. Now you don't have to waste that money. Introducing MCI's Proof Positive Worldwide. Save up to 50% off typical international calls around the world. Call by September 30th and get one month of free long-distance. Call MCI now and put your money back in your business. Introducing the new supercharged Toyota Previa SC. Oh, the sacrifices we make for our children. <laughs> Peerless Faucet didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Calling all sports. Finally, there's sports talk. <laughs> For people who have something to say. Calling all sports. Weeknights. CNN is calling all sports. 1 a.m. Eastern on CNN. Welcome back. The New Yorker magazine is reporting the defense for O.J. Simpson will contend that he was framed by a racist cop. According to the article, the defense will claim that Detective Mark Furman actually found two gloves at the murder scene of Simpson's ex-wife and her friend. He took one and placed it on Simpson's estate. The article cites interviews with two members of Simpson's defense team. Lead attorney Robert Shapiro tells the Associated Press that the story did not originate from him. Furman is denying the allegations. Simpson will be arraigned Friday on double murder charges. There's an old NASCAR circuit proverb that says something like, he who sits on the pole doesn't always grab the checkers. 
<laughs> However, Jeff Bodine must have been listening to some other good old boy saying because he backed up his qualifying excellence with a ride from heaven over the Pocono International Speedway. This obviously Ernie Irvin and uh, not Jeff Bodine. Harry Gant has some problems. He's uh, smoking out there. Not the right way, though. Jeff Bodine cruised for most of this to an easy victory. And for the win, he gets, he gets showered with some, now let's see, oh, well. Big old bob, big, big old bottle of Miller beer. This win is Bodine's first of the season, first of the year for a car with Hoosier tires. And at the Toronto Molson Indy, Michael Andretti's hoping this huge win can jumpstart his IndyCar season. His work ends the Penske seven race winning streak. It's also Andretti's fourth Indy Toronto win. All right, time for us to take a quick pit stop back with the Davis Cup and the pod shortly. Racing leaderboard brought to you by Jiffy Lou. If it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it isn't. This is $20,000. This is also $20,000. You'd take care of this, wouldn't you? You should take care of your car just as carefully, which is why you should bring your car to Jiffy Lube and ask for Pennzoil. Your car is worth thousands of dollars. Give it the quality of Pennzoil and the experience of Jiffy Lube. We got experience. Jiffy Lou, America's favorite oil change. They speak it in England, France, and Germany. It sounds the same in the U.S. and Mexico as it does in Hong Kong and Tokyo. It's the international language of business. And wherever it's spoken, Delta Airlines can put you right in the middle of the conversation. And then we'll bring you back to that place where you don't have to say a word to be understood. Delta Airlines. This Sunday in Rotterdam was supposed to be a clear sail ahead in the Davis Cup draw for the United States, but when Richard Krajcik of the Netherlands, of the Netherlands shocked number one in the world, Pete Sampras, suddenly the tie was tied and it was up to Jim Courier and Jaco Elting. Winner carries his team into December's semifinal date with Sweden. This is Elting, bottom of your screen. Look at Courier, the big ground strokes. Backhand down the line, Elting covers it, but Courier, just too much power, just drills it. But Elting dug the backhand volley out, and he was right in the thick of this thing. Courier with the backhand, and he's on the dead run. Whips the cross-court topspin forehand. That could the kind of play that pulls Courier through. A little bit later in the match, there it is. Matter of fact, very late in the match, because it's match point. There it is. Courier says thanks uh, to Pete Sampras for putting Courier in the position after spending the last couple of years in Sampras' shadow. This adds to Courier's character and list of accomplishments. Semifinal uh, action against Sweden will be in December. Well, there's no question tonight's pod defines excellence on the playing field. Plenty of candidates to choose from this Sunday, but tonight the price is right. And we go back to Turnberry, Scotland, oh. the British Open. Oh. And this, the 50-foot putt for Eagle on 17. Oh. Nick Price. Oh. Yes. Oh. Tom, you know, you, you've done that before, haven't you? I, I think you have. Nick Price, this first British Open championship, and there it is, the POD proof positive style. Proof positive play of the day. Brought to you by MCI. MCI, better for your business. Every year, American business wastes millions of dollars on international calls by using the wrong long-distance company. Now you don't have to waste that money. Introducing MCI's Proof Positive Worldwide. Save up to 50% off typical international calls around the world. Call by September 30th and get one month of free long distance. Call MCI now and put your money back in your business. 3-2 pitch to Griffey. Ooh. My, oh my! It's a cheater! It's a dinger! 